Good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to uh, be here today. It is Small Business Friday, and we, during COVID, we had decided that Fridays were a great day on behalf of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce to provide information on how to increase business for yourself, attract business to your website, and grow your business. So right now, um, I wanna get this started because it, we had an overwhelming uh, response to this webinar and I'm so excited about this. Um, I wanna introduce Anthony Turco and Heather Desset from Net Elixir, and they're gonna take it over on how important it is to properly invest in digital marketing in 2021 and build a growth plan that works for you and your business. So right now I'm gonna turn it over to them because we have a lot of great information going on. Wonderful, thank you so much, uh, Helena. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to join today and speak with, with all the small business owners. Um, I'm joined uh, here by uh, Heather Desset, uh, my colleague at NetElixir. Um, Heather, if you just want to kind of share a quick uh, overview, I think you'll be handling any of the incoming questions. So uh, just let everyone know how that will work. Hi, everyone. Yep. So happy Friday. I'm Heather Desset. I'm NetElixir's event marketing manager. Very happy to have everyone here today. Um, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, please submit them. Um, I'll be pushing them to Anthony live throughout the presentation. Perfect. Thank you so much, Heather. Yeah, we want to keep this uh, an, an open dialogue throughout. Uh, we'll do our best to answer questions on the fly. Um, the you know purpose of this goal here is, as Helena put it, um, how to properly invest. Um, you know, not just throw money at something and, and build a plan that works for your business, whether you're in service or whether you're selling products. Um, and we're going to talk a lot about obviously with it being the online space, right? If anything, 2020 has taught us. It's the need to be online. Uh, you know, we all have digital backups of, of various items in, in our lives. Why not digitally back up our business online? So that's, that's the overview and that's the goal and the purpose today. Uh, I'll give you some background on myself. Um, I've, I've been in this space over 11 years. Uh, I, my background is actually in finance and entrepreneur. I've, I've built businesses um, myself. So I understand what it's like to have that mindset as a business owner, um, not unsure about what to do, what to market in, how to even get started in, 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 this, in this space. So um, you can reach me on LinkedIn. I'll share my uh, email and phone number after the presentation as well. Uh, quick background on NetElixir. I've been with NetElixir uh, almost six years now. Uh, our primary goal, uh, our differentiator, what sets us apart is finding those high value customers for our clients, uh, acquiring those game changing insights that, that no other agency is really looking at and how it applies to our, our clients' businesses. We partner with uh, several big name companies, uh, some that you see there at the top, UPS, Google, Bing, Facebook. Uh, our solutions really run the entire gamut of digital. Um, I like to say the only thing we really don't touch is email marketing, but cover everything else, including influencer marketing, which has become one of the fastest growing um, sectors uh, that, that, that we, we work with. So the agenda today, we're going to break this up into four parts. Um, we're going to start with building that digital foundation, right? And uh, my goal is to, uh, you know, have an audience of, if, if anybody is looking to start for the first time of digital marketing online or, or start a website, you're going to find this very valuable. But I will be sure to throw in some intermediate um, uh, steps as well uh, and more some advanced topics as well if you're already currently online. Beginning your investment, really, like how do you get started? What's the way to select the right goals? Um, how do you select the right digital asset channels? And then sustaining uh, that in investment, right? Um, just starting it, we want to sustain it. Okay. Understanding and then understanding it. How is it making us, how is it making us money? What to look for, what to do if things are not performing as well as they should be. So beginning with the digital foundation, we want to look at visualizing, planning, and understanding where we want to get position, right? Within the, the market. I, I'm going to draw a lot of analogies from the financial markets, from the financial sectors to build that analogy. You're gonna hear a lot of analogies as we, go, as we go forward here. When you build the blueprint of your online store, it, it's critical that you, you have the mindset 
that you would go into this as you would be going into planning a brick and mortar, right? That should apply to your digital store as well. Just because it's digital does, doesn't mean you can take, you can be lax with in terms of, of how you're preparing for it. My personal rule of thumb of just kind of what I've seen successful over my, my 10 years in this space is the startup of your digital foundation really should be 50% of what a brick and mortar investment would cost. So, you know, it might be $150,000 to open up a franchise brick and mortar. $75,000 should be if you're going straight only digital. Okay. That's my personal kind of rule of thumb. You want to ask yourself where and how you would play, right? The idea here is, is that how do you want to position your brand? Is you going to go quantity over quality or quality over quantity, or there, there's going to be a hybrid of both? Are you going to be drop shipping or are you going to do first party, right? How do you want to grow your market? What's your market look like? Is it a small niche market? Is it more of a market that can expand over time or is it a new and penetrating market, right? So we want to understand how and where we will play. So some of the thought drivers, um, you're going to see these pop up throughout. Uh, the idea here is, is just to kind of get you guys thinking, you know, we'll answer a few of these on the way, but I really just want to get you guys thinking. Um, so Thought driver number one is what, what do you think is the average e-commerce digital startup cost? And maybe what are the, some of the things that that entails? So think about that. I'm going to give you a quick key tip. You'll see a lot of these as well as we go through. Um, so think about that thought driver. We'll revisit that on the next slide. But again, the key tip here is always think about your digital store through that brick and mortar lens, right? A lot of times I see business owners, they, they look at their analytics reports, they see clicks, they see conversion rate, they see impressions, right? There's human beings behind that. And I think when we're not, you know, at a cash register, at an office, inside a brick and mortar building, seeing customers come and go, seeing how they interact with your products, see how they walk up and down the aisles. A lot of times we, we, we forget that, right? When it's, a, it's fully digital. And I think, again, what 2020 has taught us is, is that, we can make digital work, but you have to bring over those concepts from, from brick and mortar as, as, they, as they come in. So hopefully you had some time to think about that thought driver there. Average startup cost actually is from 5,000 to 100,000, right? And that's, there's a lot of things that that's gonna depend on. What we talked about is where and when, where and how you will play. That's that gap of 5,000 to 100,000. So it's absolutely critical. You really have a blueprint of what you want to do and how you want to do it before you make this investment because I, you, you don't want to underinvest, you don't want to overinvest. My personal suggestions of things to not skimp out on, um, early, early in my career, back in high school, when I first started my first business with, uh, it was a DJ company, and we, obviously, high school student, didn't want to spend too much money to get the startup, and, and we didn't get the greatest microphones. It took one wedding with the microphone cutting in and out during a best man speech to realize a hard lesson learned that there is absolutely some critical things you do not want to skimp out on, right? Because that, it, it, those things snow, snowball. Number one is a professional design. Number two is your customer experience tools and plugins. Now those two go hand in hand and I can't stress this enough. Um, your website is your 24 hour day, never take a break, never sick, never vacation salesman why not make that the best it can possibly be? Uh, companies spend an exorbitant amount of money training their individuals, their, their human resources. And I, I don't see that same effort into their, their website, which is always on and always promoting your message. Then compound that with customer experience and, and your navigation, loyalty reviews. Are you giving them recommended products? Do you have call to actions? Do you have support, live chat? a customer support number, fulfillment services. Again, still all in line with, with kind of that core website experience. Are they, are they getting two-day shipping? Is it one day? Is it same day? Do you have good fulfillment that can back that up? Having a good social presence and your products and photos. Uh, some I, I showed you there. Um, you see great background. Products are being shown to scale and different uses of the products and some other kind of fluff items around it to really give that, that full, full picture, okay? 
My key tip here would be never get stale. Always look to improve your design. Take a look at it once every one to two years. I, I'm not saying you have to radically shift things, but new things come to market, right? There's new tools, there's new plugins of how to help your customers navigate, whether they're purchasing a product or signing up for a service that you offer. Choosing the right platform is very critical. I mean, there, there's a lot of things critical when you're starting, right? The foundation is everything. You don't have a good foundation. If you're built on sand, it's going to crumble. Uh, it may not, it may, it may take a while to crumble. And that's the worst thing I see happen with, with, you know, clients that come to us with a bad site is it took them too long to realize it was a bad site. Choosing the right platform. The analogy here is think of it as going from a hotel room to that raw plot of land, right? So, the idea here is you have to know again where you want to play how much control do i want how much time do i want to get back or time that i want to commit with so your thought driver here is are you willing to have an honest self-reflection over how much time you can devote to your website what your true level of expertise is to manage that website and it's okay if there's none right that's why you hire companies to do a professional design or hire a web developer uh, but that's going to go into that that startup cost, right? That five thousand to one hundred thousand. A lot of it depends on the time you can commit to it, your level of expertise, and and how far you want to take it. Okay, so selecting the right platform, you should really be thinking about those thought drivers. Key tip is take advantage of our white paper. I'm going to share this with you. We're going to have a special offer at the end of this webinar. So please take advantage of it. Um, it's a uh, kind of a cheat sheet guide on whether to choose Magento, BigCommerce, or Shopify. We chose those as they're, as they're the big three. So we did the foundation. Now we're ready to begin that investment. Okay, so we're gonna look at your goals, a careful evaluation of your internal and external resources, okay? And your overall asset allocation. Assets, in this case, I said I was gonna be drawing a lot from the financial sector. Think of assets not stocks and bonds, but think of them as SEO, think of them as paid search, think of them as Facebook, right? Starting with goals. Goals are critical. It's very, no one wants to do them, right? Everyone wants to dive in and just get started. No one wants to goal set. It's like going to the gym. You don't want to stretch. You just kind of want to get to your workout, get started and get, get home. But it's critical. It's a critical component here. And, and I can't stress that enough. Uh, big picture, uh, vision helps with those stepping stones. I would recommend kind of a five, three, one, six model, five-year plan, three-year plan, one-year plan, and what's your six, what do you wanna accomplish within six months? And then work from the top down. Your five years is gonna fill into, flow into your three years or one year into your, into your six months. Quantify the goals. I, too many times I'm on uh, consultant calls with clients and, and we ask them what their goals are and they tell us, oh, we wanna, you know, grow revenue, or we just want to maximize profits. It's that's great. And we should all be that optimistic. Quantifying your goals better helps set target and better makes either your internal team or your agency responsible for hitting those targets, right? When you can see what you're, you're, you're aiming at, the likelihood of hitting it is significantly better. You know, so for example, your company goals should roll down to your marketing goals. So if, if the, the target goals are 25% year over year growth after year one, your marketing goals for your agency or your internal team may look like something, well, we need a 15% increase in paid search revenue, 5% increase in social, and a 5% increase in organic, right? Or if your goal is just higher revenue, per customer that comes in, maybe we wanna just bump up paid search because that's the quickest way to get quality traffic in, in an immediate sense. Your thought driver here, I'd like to ask you, you know, what may cause a business to underestimate their goals or overestimate their goals? Okay, so think about that when you're doing your goal setting. Key tip, try to differentiate your goals, okay? Don't just focus on the, the numeric, key KPI of revenue or profit. They're great and they should absolutely be part of your goals, but think about goals as it relates to your webinar. Is there, or webinar, uh, your website, is it new pages you wanna add? Is it a better customer experience? What about your internal, right? Cost of goods sold or cost of, of your service? You know, to what does it cost to book and service a new CPA client? Or uh, 
what is it cost of goods sold for your products rolling out the door and break them out by category. Cause that's going to help when you are able to have that information and you share that with your marketing team or with an agency, that's going to give them more information to better serve you uh, and better hit those goals. So we want to look at how do we set the right goals, right? Cost of goods sold, very important. Um, and it's important to be honest uh, about your cost of goods sold because that's a big component um, to how successful you become in your marketing. I've worked, uh, and you know, to give you guys an example here, as you can see on the screen, there's particular products in particular categories that may have a wide range of costs of goods sold. Well, if your cost of goods sold is less to sell a particular product, like for example, a Fitbit, which very small watch oriented, 25% doesn't cost a whole lot to ship. Maybe you have a large stock of them, price is $200. I'd be willing to bid as an agency or a marketer significantly more for that because your, your overall profit is much higher. So we can capture more market share and not risk so much in terms of, 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 of internal expenses. But the flip side of that, air purifiers, sky drones, big bulky items, maybe they break a lot, maybe they have a lot of returns, cost of goods sold tends to be a little bit high. You, that, you have to keep that in mind when you set your bidding structure, okay? I've had too many times where, where we're talking with our clients and educating them on the fact of, well, you want a five to one return on your investment, $5 in revenue for every dollar that you spend, whether it's revenue per lead or revenue from a product, but your cost of goods sold is 80%. So you actually really need an, an eight to one return to show the profit goal that you told us that you wanted to hit. And that's very important to understand that, right? So you have your fixed costs, you have your, your, your variable costs um, and, and understanding what those things that you can control. Talking about your market, there's a lot of free tools out there. Google Trends is one that I particularly like um, just to help us analyze and say, all right, well, we have drones, smartwatches, smart homes. So if you're a smart company and you service these products, you're able to see kind of the, um, the peaks and valleys, if you will, of when customers often shop. So if you're trying to penetrate the market, you know, let, let's get in two or three months before those peak seasons, make sure we have all our ducks in a row. Writing out the equation and looking at those key variables that work, okay, and the levers that you can push and pull that affect positive or negative outcomes. So a very easy to look at equation is looking at your P&L equation as it relates to kind of just a standard campaign, okay. Your greens are your controlled var variables. Those are your levers. Your blue is the kind of the output of what they produce, right? So if you increase your click-through rate, you're gonna get more clicks because the number of impressions, that's where you're gonna start with. That's your market share. How, how many eyeballs do I need on my site that when I times it by my click-through rate, I get X number of clicks because then you see the, the process as it flows, right? Like any good equation, it should flow one into the other. Clicks times your cost per click give you the, your ad spend. Clicks times conversion, that gives you your conversions. Then your average order value, or average lead value, and then your cost of goods sold obviously is important because that's going to go into your, that total cost component, right? So when we look at this, I want to point out one key thing. Notice how ad spend, I, I, that, that, that is not the beginning. That should be the end. The beginning should be your market share. How many people do I think I can attract? How many people do I want to attract to my particular site? Ad spend is a is the answer or the budget. Ad spend, same thing, is, is the budget. That's the answer. It's not the variable. Don't guess at it. Set your goals. Determine what variables are needed. Do I need to increase my cost per click? Do I need to increase my click-through rate? What about my conversion rate? It, and that goes into your site, right? Your user experience. Are my customers converting when I get onto the site? Those items, you have a degree of control on, on, on whether you're, they're going up or they're going down, okay? And again, that's part of what an agency does. We spend our time in um, and, and why we're able to be successful with driving results for our clients is because we know how to master those levels and ultimately recommend 
um, not recommend a budget, but produce a budget for our clients that's driving to their goals, right? Because we don't want to guess, certainly guess at a, at a, at a, at a budget. One uh, other quick tip I would add to this is when you're setting those goals, any of the decision makers, if you're the decision maker or, um, it, you know, obviously we have a, a great number of people joining today. Um, if you're the decision maker, try to be on as many marketing conversations as possible. If you're director of marketing or your manager of marketing, make sure to loop in your finance teams, your, your, your CFOs, your CEOs as much as possible or give them a report because the worst thing is for the marketing director to have a goal and that not be run by the CEO because of this or the CFO where they may have other insights into the expenses that they're incurring. So we want everybody to be on the same page. Getting into asset allocation, okay? This is where, when I talk about assets, I'm talking about your marketing drivers, your SEOs, your Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, all the different areas that you can advertise digitally, okay? Pay, think of it this, break it into two items, paid and organic. We know that paid is anything you're actively paying for a click or for a cost per lead, you're paying for acquisition or your a target return on ad spend. Organic is anything that is organic, uh, organic social content, organic SEO content. Paid gives you faster returns, but you sacrifice long-term growth. Paid, the analogy I'll use there is you are paid, if you're involved in paid, you're the speculators, you're your day traders, okay? In and out, quick hits, quick resources, quick money. And if you want to keep making that money, you got to come back the next day and do the same thing, right? Paid search is very much like that. Making good money, but the second you stop funding those ads, the second that money dries up. Now, there'll be some residual effects of long lifetime value, but for the most part, that dedicated money, we call, you know, they're your cash cows. That's your, your un, um, reinvestment, right? You got to do it every single day. SEO, think of that as your 401k plan, right? long-term growth, but you don't get the returns as, as fast. And it, it stings a little bit, right? If we've ever funded our, our 401ks, you know, if you're putting $500 a paycheck in it, all right, the market goes up 10%. All right, $500 times 10%, congrats, you just made $50. Uh, well, my, my investment was 500. I'm only making 50. SEO is the same way. It, it's going to be an investment that you have to float for a good four, five, six months before you get that return. So think about that when you're deciding what asset to get involved in, right? If, if you need quick returns, you have venture capitalist funding, they need to show growth. Paid search, paid social is probably the way to go. If you've been more established, you have a good paid search program, you have residual income that you're looking to reinvest, now might time to be a good time to start building a long-term uh, growth plan, right? Because like your 401k, when you get 30, I mean, it doesn't take 30 years to build SEO, but when you get long into it and you have a big nest egg of, of value there, even a three to 4% shift in the market, that can be extremely positive, okay? Yes, Think about I where you- Move on. Um, I just had a question from the audience. Sure, go ahead. Um, Carol wants to know about LinkedIn for generating business from other businesses. Do you have any information on LinkedIn? Sure. Uh, good question. So LinkedIn, um, that there's paid components to LinkedIn, right? It's the same philosophy. You could do it organically, posting, sharing content, or there's some paid approaches. I particularly like the paid approach if you're in an industry that needs to connect with other professionals, especially for service-based um, service based leads product-wise. So if you're in an industry that you're selling product online, that's a great way to get into that, that B2B. So if you're doing, you know, large programs. So for example, we had a client yesterday that was that, you know, with selling shower curtains and wallpapers, be, um, LinkedIn would be awesome to do a paid program in to target designers, uh, interior designers, decorators. I would even say contractors, right? Because if you can connect with a contractor that's building a plot of, of houses, 20 houses on a plot of land, that's 20 potential homes that you can now sell him on a um, wallpaper uh, design. So LinkedIn is 
a component of paid and also a component of organic, and it follows that 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 same structure as what we just talked about. But that's why you got to know where do I want to play? Do I want to focus on B two B market, B two C? Do I want to do both? Because that's going to dictate which channel that that you're in. Great question. Um, so getting into the the quick tip on this before we before we move on. The expected timeline of the ROI, and I talked about that with SEO, right? It takes longer to generate that ROI. You have to make sure that you have you you're, you understand that concept here, um, because if you if you have deliverables for your boss, or you're working with an agency who you expect deliverables from them, it's going to determine what type uh, those deliverables will be determined based off of what asset allocation that, that, that you guys choose, whether it's an, an organic route or a paid route or a hybrid of both. This is, um, uh, I don't I wanna put too much time on this slide. I just wanna kind of get your mindset into um, the idea of risk and reward. I think paid search gives you the biggest reward because I see a lot of customers that, that really need that revenue, right? Everything's moving online, everything's moving quick generate revenue so that I can reinvest it into some other things, okay? Uh, because of the nature of paid search, it's an investment, right? It's it's immediate. It's every day you're, you're paying per click. The risk is going to be higher. SEO, there's a much more structured approach if you can float that, that um, investment over four to five months. The return will be there, but it, it, it's a larger investment up front that you have to make. But over time, it's less risky because of the exponential buildup, right? Of, of compounding the, once you start ranking for things, it's very hard to remove those rankings from Google. Once you stop funding your ads, it's they're immediate, they're gone. So that's, that's that trade off between risk and reward. And then it kind of scales down, you know, through some of the other, uh, other services there. Influencer has uh, B2C and social and marketplaces have, I would, this chart probably would change a little bit given over the last two years, how much they have, um, have boomed. So we wanted, to, uh, so we're talking about, you know, we talked about goals. We talked about choosing the right asset allocation. We're just, we're almost ready. We haven't even said, all right, let's start marketing, right? Because all this is so important to make sure you have squared away. UX is everything, okay? The analogy here I would use, imagine sending out invitations for a house party you want to host with all your family and friends, right? You purchased all the food, you got all the drinks, you got all the entertainment, invitations are out, you have all the supplies ready to go, but you never bother to clean up your house or fix the door to actually enter the house or, you know, cleaned up the stain on, on, on the rug or fix the TV that's broken. Now your guests can't watch anything. That's not going to be a good guest experience for them. The same thing applies to the, the website, right? If, if, if you're generating all this traffic from your marketing, but your website is not where it should be, it's all sunken cost with your marketing. Yeah, you may convert a little bit, but your conversion rates never going to be where you need it to be in that equation that we showed you that's going to drive the number of conversions with the average order value that's going to get you to the revenue because customers aren't going to have a good experience on your site. Three things you're, it's going to cost you to perfect this user experience. It's either your time where you're doing it yourself with the level of expertise that you have, your money to bring someone in to do that, or it's going to cost you your business because over time, customers are going to find a better alternative than, than, than working with your particular, your, your business. Key focus areas, I would suggest, first and foremost, mobile first. 37% increase in bounce rate with a poor mobile experience. And this poor mobile experience is anywhere from that four to five second mark, right? As soon as you start hitting four to five seconds with no visual rendering at all, 37% bounce rate off the site. And then you work backwards to say, well, if I, if I spent time and fixed that, got it from five seconds to, to two and a half seconds, could I take 37% and could I make that number 10%? Well, you just took 27% now of customers. If you're doing 100,000 visitors, what's 27% times 100,000, 27,000 times your conversion rate, times your average order value. That's how you make the opportunity cost assessment of fixing things on your website, right? Starting with, with mobile. Key to other key target areas I would recommend you take a look at your site search. 
85% of searches don't return what the user's looking for. There's something broken with that site search. I'd recommend, you know, looking at, at site search plugins that are highly rec rated, highly recommended for your particular engine, right? If you're on Shopify, get the highest rated uh, search uh, plugin. Form validations, reducing the number of fields that people have to fill out, whether you're collecting lead information, because for, if you're a dentist collecting patient information, lawyers collecting content information, somebody that wants, you know, that needs a lawyer or, or product, someone's che checking out on the shopping cart, reduce the friction there. Form validations are huge where it auto populates, right? Because people have their information stored. 35% will abandon if there's no guest checkout. That's something to consider. And part of that checkout process, give them an option to do guest checkout. Okay, that, that obviously applies to our, our e-commerce uh, uh, guests that are here with us today. Carousels, no picture carousels. Very interesting stat that came out. Um, uh, yeah, this from straight from Google, almost 90% click through rate on position one. So of the clicks that the carousel got, almost 90% are from the picture one. And you could see three, two, two, three percent from positions two through five. So it, it's not worth the extra bandwidth that your site has to take, which is page speed to load all those images when all the customer cares about is the one image. So just have the one image. Pay attention to above the fold call to actions. Above the fold just simply means you have your vis visible monitor, right? So for example, everything below my chest is below the fold. So think of your website the same way. If we are putting your main call to action below the fold, no one's going to see it and they have to scroll. It's all user experience and you can run heat map reports to see where customers' eyeballs are going. That, that's something that you, could, um, you can do as well. Uh, one step checkout, key tip here, don't be afraid to survey your customers. I, customers like to know that they're, they have some input into their shopping experience. Ask them what they like and dislike about the site. Um, it's not whether you like the site, it's whether your customers like the site. And sometimes that, that's a hard truth um, to, to grasp uh, as, as a business owner, but that's you know, critically what, what, you need to, what you need to look at. Also think about every bad experience you've ever had on a site that you're shopping or you're going on to look for something or a service. Remember that, write it down and make sure that your site's not doing the same thing, right? I'm sure local businesses that have gone into other dentist office lawyers or CPAs and go, or whether it's a grocery store, I hate how they laid out their aisles. It doesn't make sense that they have only one checkout person on a busy time of day. Note that down and make sure you don't make the same mistakes. Um, Anthony, before you move on, we have a sure. question from the audience. Megan just yes. wants to know what a carousel is. So if you can explain what carousels sure, are. Sure, sure. Um, carousel, think of, you know, just like we see at the amusement park, right? It goes around and around. In this case, if you've ever been on a site where you see a, um, an image and it starts to shift to the next image and then it shifts to the next image and shifts to the next image and it will keep repeating that cycle, that's what a carousel is. So what this slide is recommending is only that first image on the carousel is really what's getting engaged. So take your most engaging call to action, put it there and ignore any of the other images. So you just have a static image, no carousel because sites that have carousels have to load every one of those images. And then you also have the flash or you know, HTML, depending on how you're, you're coding to actually create that movement. All that takes bandwidth and all that sucks up your, your page speed and, and, and time, okay? Uh, we talked a lot about on in terms of calculation, right? Uh, oh, bounce rates. Well, if I got my bounce rates down 27% times the number of customers I have coming in times my average order value and my conversion rate, that can offset my revenue of the loss that I'm getting. So if I fix my mobile speed, I'll have that. Here's another easy to think about calculation kind of along those same lines, right? 15,000 people visit coming in, 70% accessing from a mobile site. There's your 30% that don't go beyond the homepage with our projected conversion rate and average order value. We potentially miss out on 10,000 or so monthly revenue. And this, this, this analogy here um, and this kind of guide equation here came to us from our partners at UPS. So we're very grateful for that um, because we saw that happening with a lot of, uh, a lot of companies. 
again, you times that over the course of a year, you're talking about some serious money there. So we, we covered um, the first two, the foundation, and then we covered beginning uh, the investment, set goal and setting, choose, choosing um, the right exit. We, yep. um, I, we just have another question from the audience. Yeah, go ahead. Um, Seth would like to know, how do you get this web statistics? So how do you get website statistics? Your website statistics. So that's where you want to really look at your, your Google Analytics. Um, it's very, very easy to set up. Uh, easy guides to find, you know, installing Google Analytics. It's just one piece of code that goes in the, the header of your, your site. And honestly, if you are on a good platform, um, there would just be a Google Analytics plugin that you should just be able to, to, to activate. That's going to give you these type of statistics. You're going to get your vi website visitors. You're going to get your mobile, um, you're going to get your mobile visits, right? You're going to get your conversion rate. And when we talk about bounce rate, we're talking about people that land on the site, don't do anything, and then move, move away. Also exit rate is, is a similar stat on that, but you'll get all of that. And, and you'll see with, with sustaining the investment, we're actually getting into that, Seth. I have tracking listed down here and I put a times three there because like location, 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 when you're all digital, it's tracking, tracking, tracking. Okay, that's how you wanna think about it. Building out high value, that HV stands for high value audiences and then optimization strategies. We're gonna look at two major assets today, paid search and SEO. Okay, so that's gonna be our, our section here. So piggybacking on, on Seth's question, which is a great question, setting up your analytics correctly. Tracking is, you've heard this word enough today, critically important, right? Because I wanna get you guys thinking of, there's so much noise out there, but this, I want you to focus on what are the mainstays? What, are, what, is, what is needed? Don't lose yourself in the process. This is a extremely busy slide here and it's busy for a reason. This is an example of what we would go through for a 25 point checklist here, okay? There's a lot involved here. You could see there's, there's almost 12 rows just dealing with tracking. You don't necessarily need all this up front, but the basics, just getting Google Analytics tag added to your site is going to give you a lot of the basics like amount of visitors, mobile visits, conversion rate, desktop visits, so on and so forth. Okay. This is agency level. This is this is your marketing team's level. This is what they should do. You as the business owner don't have to be as involved in this. This is what should be done from the day-to-day -day side for your marketing team or from your agency. But I'm going to give you five key things that you want to be tracking that's not standard in Google in Google Analytics. So th this, these things do not come with analytics rolled out of the box, okay? First thing is any revenue orders or conversions, okay? Revenue, obviously, for your or our e-commerce folks joining us today, conversions can be lead-driven, lead right, a, a form sign-up. Uh, that's going to be first and foremost. And it kind of goes without saying, right? You, you want to make sure your, your website's profitable. Setting up your conversion tracking uh, is, is needed. Other things you can do, right? Not, not all transactions come through a checkout and not all leads come through a form. Sometimes people call in. Sometimes people use a live chat. Uh, sometimes people do a purchase order. Right, so you have you have a sales team, a big order, big B two B order that might go through a purchase order. Events and goals are kind of that that is that additional tracking metric to really get a holistic approach as to the total amount of revenue that your site is driving. Because you want to count that. You don't want to just say, well, the revenue that came through the site was fifty thousand dollars. Well, but you had fifteen thousand in phone sales, five thousand in sales coming from a live chat operator, and 35,000 coming from your sales team doing B2B orders. But all those orders started with the customer coming to your website, coming from either a paid search campaign or a paid social campaign or organically coming in. So you wanna make sure all those are tracked. Customer behavior funnels. This goes with that UX component, right? How are customers engaging my site? Where are they dropping off? If you find that once they get to the checkout page, you have an 80% drop off, well, maybe the checkout page is a little wonky. Maybe it asks them it's too many forms or, or it asks them too much sensitive information. You have to know that. You have to know where they're, they're dropping off. And then, of course, you can cross-reference that with 
well, what's my desktop behavior like? What's my mobile behavior like? A lot of businesses, um, just I'll give you a quick sneak uh, key tip here. A lot of businesses don't parse their their analytics. They don't parse their reporting and look at it from the lens of a desktop and the lens of a mobile. They just look at it overall. And they say, oh, my conversion rate's 2%. All right, that's great. Well, what they don't realize is their desktop might be a, an 8% conversion rate, but only get 25% of the traffic. Whereas mobile gets 75% of the traffic, but has a half a percent conversion rate. Yeah, it's gonna average out to be a reasonable conversion rate, but the bulk of your traffic is not getting a good experience. That's why you have to always be looking at it through a couple different lenses. Again, this helps when you have a marketing team or an agency that's, that's looking at this stuff every given day so they can get ahead of these problems and not and fix it before it starts to compound. UTM codes is a little bit more advanced. Um, that's if you're if you're doing like uh, extra campaigns, right? So if you're doing an email marketing campaign, customer clicks on an email link and goes to your website, we want to make sure that, that that's tied into Google Analytics so that you can look at, well, how's my email marketing performing? Um, if you're doing an influencer campaign, you can you can tie, you can can set up UT, uh, UTM just as is, is, is universal tracking, basically. It's just, it's kind of a um, way to write the code to track certain things beyond your website when you're doing other campaigns. Thought driver for us today uh, on this particular slide, um, Think about some other custom segments, okay? Uh, that number five point there is very, very important. Custom segments just simply ways to divide your, your, your customers. Let's, if you want to compare just Cyber Five Week, right? Just Cyber Monday, Black Friday, Thanksgiving Day, and Cyber Tuesday. And you want to compare that year over year because, hey, we're heading into Cyber 5. We get 30% of our yearly revenue comes from the holiday season. I need to know what I did last year. What can I predict, predict this year? Analytics is not going to give you that right away. You have to customize that segment. You have to create that custom segment. Why that's important is because you can build audiences within those custom segments that's meaningful to your business, right? You're going to get out of the box metrics from Google Analytics that every business should, should want and need. But as it specifically applies to your business is important. How about if you sell, you know, greeting cards, Mother's Day, Father's Day, Valentine's Day, if you sell flowers, Mother's Day, Valentine's Day, you're going to want to know what, what things happen on those days, right? So building those custom segments is, is important. And you're, you'll be able to then create audiences and see how that behavior interacts with every step of the customer journey funnel through first aware, getting awareness of your product or business, consideration of maybe engaging, intent, focus. They put something in their shopping cart, they make it to a consult page, and then ultimately the decision when they fill out the form, say, yes, I want a consult, or yes, I'd like to buy this product. Key tip here, uh, the end goal for any audience creation is that high value customer. High value customers are customers that are purchasing on average at a 3X higher average value than the rest of your customers. Once you're able to find those customers, it's gonna open up the doors dramatically for you. And I'll show you an example of this here where we use that, this is our software now, this is Netlixer software, Elixir Insights. We were able to get like any good stock broker, you wanna buy low and sell high, but you wanna predict those trends based off of key metrics that you're seeing in the market, right? That's that's how businesses make their, or stock traders make their decisions. Well, in our case, we saw three key items. Purchases happening quicker. Purchases happening with less friction, fewer touch points, going from 10 clicks in their journey to eight, and a higher value. These three items indicated that we were ready for a breakout trend. And what you saw here, you saw things get ready to just kind of peak. And it peaked in April at a 300% increase overall. This is a, a case study that we had. A CEO came to us from this particular client of ours and was nervous. Things were very upheaval. A lot of people were hitting the panic button as COVID was taking over. And we calmed them down. We said, we have the data to support a breakout trend here. And in turn, we invested a lot of money and resources and rode that trend all the way up through April. Hey, Anthony, we have two questions. I just want to okay. guess. Mm -hmm. right, um, so Seth had a follow-up question. He's a sole proprietor. So in regards to the website statistics, um, does he need to use a web host? 
a a web post a web host a web host a web host yeah yeah every website's going to need to be hosted um it, godaddy uh and and actually if, if i don't know if you're brick and mortar service based or if you're looking to go online and your and your service or your your e-commerce driven shopify great for e-commerce they have their own hosting uh you can't go wrong with godaddy as a host though all right and then we have one more question from richard um stepping back to your comment on the foundation do you find that clients entrepreneurs typically overestimate or underestimate their ability to execute and do it yourself when it comes to digital marketing um i i find clients uh a lot of times they underestimate it's it, it's a uh it, it's fear right it's fear it's I, it's risk i don't i don't i don't know what's going to happen here's you know you reckon you know ten thousand dollars is a lot of money yes it's a lot of money that's why when when i consult and my team consults with you know prospective clients for net elixir we look at um we don't we the the budget is the end that's the answer we walk them through a solid logical plan of of various what if scenarios backed by expertise, right? And saying, we can grow your click through rates. We can grow your conversion rates. We can actually reduce your cost per click because part of our optimization is reducing that risk, right? When we start identifying your key markets, we're able to reduce the risk because now we're getting a much more concise message with the right market. You're going to get a much better quality score because customers are going to be, be be coming more often. That's going to reduce cost per click. Which, when you reduce cost per click, you reduce the cost, but still get the same amount of clicks. That equation raises revenue. So we try and walk them through a very easy to follow process. But yeah, I feel like they, a lot of companies uh, underestimate their goals, and I think it's just it's it's the fear um, of of investing, and we, we we try and alleviate that just like a financial advisor would do, right? And um, oh. Anthony, we just got one more, and then you sure. can. Yep, go ahead. Um, so Demetrius asks, um, does Netelixer only work with online stores or businesses, consulting firms applicable with our services? Um, we we can work with with both. Yep, we can work with both. Uh, our specialty, uh, obviously, is e-commerce. Um, you'll you'll notice probably about seventy five percent is geared more towards e-commerce because that's that's Netelixer specialty, but. Um, Product purchases and a lead driven, it's, it, they're both goals, right? We want more products or we want, want, want more leads. And when you look at it through that lens, it's all about the equations leading up to that. And, and that's how Netelixer approaches that. We do work with both. And Richard has one more follow-up question and then we'll take some questions in a little bit. Um, but Richard wanted to ask, um, he, do you recommend that clients hire an expert like Netelixer or do it internally? Um, without knowing you know, where things are at with your business right now would be hard for me to say, but I would go back to my original slide and just have that honest conversation of, of where, where, what are your goals? Where you want to, where, where do you want to go? Because again, it comes down to your time. How much time do you have and your expertise, right? If you, this extremely expert person may take only one hour to do something that somebody that's not an expert may take them 10. So you have to look at that and, and make the decision um, to, to do it based off of that. But Richard, we're happy to follow up, you know, and, and dive a little more into your business, um, you know, obviously after after the webinar. I, I want to get, get into and, and spend some time before we, we wrap up with understanding your investment. So I told you two key areas in optimization we're going to look at, one SEO, and then we're going to look at one in, in paid, paid search. SEO, always think in terms of trends, right? If this was a stock, where would we buy and where would we sell? Look at that. But also, if this is a stock, we don't don't panic when things start to bottom out like this, right? You want to panic when you, your, your trends start producing lower lows, right? So if this is the, the, the baseline here, well, this is where I would start to be concerned because it's now dropped below and you can see it's remained there, right? It didn't start rebounding. That tells me there's a major problem of something that happened here. Now it could be, these are Google algorithms. Okay. So as we go forward here, you're going to see different algorithms that pop up that can positively or negatively impact your business. Okay. So you want to get an idea of your, your visibility. You then want to break, you want to start building content. Content is important. This is going to be the first of two Matt Damon references. Matt Damon, if you remember the movie Goodwill Hunting, okay, I use this a lot because it makes sense. He's this super genius expert that nobody knows about. 
and all his friends and teachers are saying, you got to write a paper, win a Nobel Prize, do a guest lecture, come and teach, be a professor, solve an equation, publish something. He doesn't want to do it. So therefore, no one knows he's an expert. He can be an expert all he wants, but nobody knows it. Expertise, authority, and trust, that's EAT. You want to build your authority by writing good content that gets recognized by Google, that validates your authority or your expertise. The trustworthiness comes from your, your customers, having good experiences on the site, having a good product, leaving good reviews. YMYL stands for your money, your life. If you're an e-commerce business, for all my e-commerce business owners out there, it's pivotal that you respect YMYL because you're asking customers to transact on your site, share credit card information. Your website gets looked at at a higher level than other websites do in the eyes of Google. If it's a double whammy and you're actually selling medical products, now you're talking about the livelihoods of your customers. Again, you're being held to a higher standard. Um, the expertise, rich, meaningful content, authoritativeness, solutions answer-based context and trustworthiness, quality traffic and reviews. Structured data is where you start to apply your content structured in a way that Google can read, okay? Without structuring your data, it's just content to Google, okay? You're not playing by their rules. Without, it's like, it's like not answering the form of a question on Jeopardy. You may have the right answer, you might have the right content, but you didn't, do it the way the rules said you should be doing it. Therefore, you get zero points. Google, unfortunately, is cruel and operates the same way. Structured data is what allows Google to showcase your information in a people also ask section. That's what's called a universal listing. Google doesn't know how to apply this unless you're structuring your data. You're writing question and answer based content. Google wants you as the business owner to educate your customers, answering questions for them, tagging your images, again, structuring your data so that it's tagged appropriately to show up in popular image results, especially, I mean, if you're doing, I'll bring back my wallpaper client, customers that will search, may search uh, wallpaper design ideas. Well, images are a vital component to that search and you wanna have that. If you're a brick and mortar service-based company, you should absolutely be in a local three pack. This is another way search results can come up on the screen. If you're a creator or you have problems to solve, how-to videos are very, very important and, and make great connections. And all of these things that you see here builds that authority because Google sees you, you have a location, you're answering questions, and you're, you're showing customers how to engage a particular product or a service. Thought Driver here with four ads that are coming up for paid search now and all these different search res results that can come up. Think about how valuable that coveted organic position one is. Not really that much anymore because there's so much other noise to go. It's all about the structured data and getting into these universal listings when you talk about SEO. Blogging, very important. Any content should follow a structure, write with purpose. A uh, blog we did for a, a generator uh, company uh, that sold generators, talking about when hurricane season is, talking about the basics of the generator, the benefits of the generator, helping them decide which one is right, alleviating that, that concern, that overwhelming feeling, right? Removing ambiguity in searches. Imagine you have certain drones. There's a consumer drone, an enterprise drone, waterproof drones, and underwater drones. All these were categories within a particular um, uh, business site. They're all getting around the same amount of search results. How does Google know which one's the most important? You have the ability to tell Google that and, and, and structure your content and your product content or service content so that there's no ambiguity, okay? They, same thing above here. Look at vacu vacuum cleaners, robot cleaners, vacuum robots or robot vacuums. They're all saying the same thing, but look, robot cleaners gets the highest search. So in this case, I would make my content around robot cleaners. And th this is Google Trends. This is a free tool that, that you guys can, can, can leverage. Getting into uh, paid search optimization. There is so many tools in, in Google ads that, again, it is very overwhelming. 
right? And, and I think my recommendation would be using at least 90% of the tools. You don't have to use 100%. It may not, 100% may not be applicable to your business, okay? Write a roadmap for your paid search program. Crawl, walk, run, get a timeline understand what you want to accomplish in there. Are you going to be doing search and shopping and display? Why? Uh, display generally is more of a top of funnel approach. So if, you, if, if revenue is a concern and not expanding your market share, you may not want to do display. So, so taking, don't just set it, activate everything and let it run. You want to build a crawl, walk, run plan to scale up. This ties in your cost of goods sold. Build an ROI grid maximize the profit for particular products or services that you guys offer. Um, again, the revenue share of a particular product and the profit margin, right? This is your cash cows and your star products. So in that upper top right quadrant, that's your star products. Accentuate those, make sure they're the highest level of bidding, right? Because you don't want to lose them. You certainly don't want to lose them to, to competition. Paid search, also has a component of content. When you talk about your text ads, uh, we see here in certain situations for, uh, this is a, a barbecue they, uh, company, we saw that nationwide shipping order today when put in, in ad copies generates a 10% or greater click-through rate and close to a 10% or greater conversion rate. This is where you wanna A-B test, constantly experiment with your ad copies. This also helps to have an agency or dedicated individual that's that's doing this on a continual routine basis. Okay. Understand your lifetime value profits and and that it you have to factor in repeat purchases of customers coming back. Key tip here is advanced metric in Google Analytics. Okay. So again, we're talking here about sustaining your investment. So this is where you should be getting into more advanced conversations with your marketing team and with your agency. Custom ID, custom ID tracking allows every customer or patient or, or, or client that comes to your site to be mapped to a specific ID so that every time they come to the site, you know exactly who they are, what they are, what they're doing on the site, and when they're purchasing, how often they're purchasing. That's when you're talking lifetime value, that's critical. And again, you, you can't start decide to do lifetime value after your fifth year in business, because you, you've just lost five years of data. That's, that's where you really want to make sure that that's a component that's being done in the first year. Lastly, again, why this helps having an agency or dedicated marketing team. This is an example of all the quality assurances that we do on a given basis. From account level through the campaign level, ad detail level, audience level, um, and, and ad group level. So you could see it's structured. It's a planned approach because if things aren't firing right, if bids are off, if your audience is off, it snowballs. It, 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 it snowballs into the performance that you're getting from your paid search and thus it's wasted money. Hey guys, I have about two minutes left and I just, uh, the purpose of understanding your, your investments, oops, sorry about that, is how to interpret the results. And my analogy here would simply be Get reports that make sense, easy grasp from an agency that you're working with or your marketing team. You as the business owner need to make easy decisions and, and easy information to comprehend is very, very important. This just, um, uh, and I'll, so here, this is a situation where you're reviewing your auction reports, it's lost impression share. Here you have, well, I'm not getting impressions because my budget's not high enough or I'm not getting impressions because my rank isn't high enough. So it's a very easy thing to look at as to why you're not getting impressions. So when something's not working, it could be one of those, those two things. Building blocks, um, work on that plan. Make sure you get reports on each one of these items here because again, my last, and I'll close with this, my last Matt Damon is right in the movie, The Martian, his goal is to get home. That's a big lofty goal from being stranded on Mars, right? But he, it's stepping stones. First, let me take care of myself, build a, a, a for something for food, for waste. I can, I had to contact NASA. Well, if he doesn't solve the food problem, it doesn't matter if he can contact NASA or not. So same thing with SEO. If there's something broken within the site, everything else falls apart. You have to, if, if step six out of 12 is broken, 
forget about steps seven through 12. Go back, fix step six, and then you can start reevaluate um, step seven. This is just some good um, uh, handling poor performance, and it kind of goes along with what I just said. Track errors, make sure, you know, if you have tag tracking errors, it's not reporting the right thing. Maybe your site speed is, is a bad, which is why you're getting low, high bounce rates. Possibly the wrong landing page that your ads are sending, you know, you're saying a message for 25% off, it goes to a landing page for free shipping. Those type of things are, you know, to things to be looked at. And a good rule of thumb here is, is that track performance is based off of the asset. We said S SEO is a longer process, Paid search is a shorter process. So make sure you're tracking performance uh, along those same lines here. And clear and concise reporting, I can't stress that enough. Hold your agencies, hold your marketing teams accountable. Um, when you understand the reports, you can have a better impact in those marketing discussions, okay? That's understanding your investment, why that's so poor. Sorry, I went a little bit fast, but I wanted to make sure I was good on time. We have a scorecard that we invite you to, to fill out. Um, happy to do a score called consult. Uh, this will give us notice that you'd like a consult. It's netelixir.com forward slash scorecard. And uh, Helena, we're going to be sharing this deck, correct? Correct. Everyone's going to get a copy of it with a, and a copy of the, I'm not sure about the presentation. The presentation is definitely going to be posted on our website. I, I, okay. I think it might be too... Uh, too hard for you to send that out, but you're going to send out a copy of the deck. Perfect. Perfect. That sounds great. And, uh, and we invite you, everybody on the call. It's been a pleasure. I invite you to share your thoughts. We have hashtag NX, NX insights. Um, we will be sharing a survey on this. So, you know, we, we want to keep producing great content for the chamber and that survey is critical in helping us. Uh, and then lastly, um, I appreciate the questions throughout, so we don't have too much time for a Q&A right now, but um, you know, we wanna always wanna give something back. And I have five items here uh, that I think connect really well with each of the sections that we covered. UX playbook, uh, content uh, suggestions for our, our ad copies, a cheat sheet on how to choose the right uh, e-commerce platform, a 25 point checklist consult that our team will give to you and uh, an attribution uh, Google One Sheeter that talks about attribution modeling. So that's our gift to you. If you could fill out the survey and or sign up for our, uh, our digital scorecard console. But um, that's gonna do it for me today, guys. It was an absolute pleasure to be a part of it. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you all got something out of it uh, at whatever level you are in your digital, digital journey. And uh, I hope to be back again soon. Again, this is Anthony Turco, Heather uh, from, from NetElixir. And I can't, Helena, thank you so much for, for giving me the time. Thank you. What a great presentation. I can tell by the questions that people were asking. They were very involved in this and very, very in tuned, I should say. So thank you so much. My pleasure. Um, so for those who are uh, still on and still listening, they're going to get a copy of all the attendees. So this way they can, they're going to send you their contact information and you can reach out, you know, have that conversation with them after this um, in case you had some questions afternoon or this evening that popped up into your head, definitely reach out to Heather and Anthony. They are huge supporters of the Greater New York Chamber of Commerce, which we appreciate. So thank you so much. And if there's anything that we can, you know, do for anyone, please feel free to reach out to the Greater New York Chamber. So Anthony and Heather, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I What a great presentation. I loved it. So, thank you. I appreciate um, it. My pleasure. We will, like I said, everyone's going to get a copy of the deck and you can, like I said, I always get the emails afterwards. Heather and Anthony are very good about reaching out to you guys. So Absolutely. don't worry about that. Yep. My, I have a team that, that is going to help support on that too, guys. So um, please reach out. Don't feel like you're overwhelming us. We're, we're ready to handle it. And, and we want to help. We live in this digital world now and you know, it, it, that, that's, that's how we want to give back. We want to give back through our knowledge, our time. So please, please take us up on that. Um, we're, we're happy to do it. Perfect. Thank you everyone for uh, supporting Small Business Fridays and everyone have a great day. I always leave with this. It's not political. Please wear a mask. We want to make sure businesses stay open. So let's, let's Absolutely. get through this so we can see each other in person. Absolutely. Have a great weekend. Be well and be safe. Thanks everybody. Bye, Bye, you guys. Thank you. Thanks.